Hello again. It is a bright and sunny day here in Winnipeg. And I thought I'd make a video today about how I have gone about converting a long scale or full scale 34 inch uh, base into a short scale. I first made uh, this demonstration in my journey to short scale bases. See the link below for that video. If you've already seen it, thanks so much for watching it and for your positive comments. As I mentioned in that video, I got into playing short scale bases due to physical limitations uh, due to an autoimmune skin and joint and muscle disease in my hands. Uh, even though we're shooting in 4K video, I'm not sure in this particular lighting you can really see, um, but you can see here maybe uh, my distal interphalangeal joints or DIP and my proximal uh, interphalangeal joints or PIP joints are pretty chronically inflamed all the time. My fingers are kind of all different shades of red and purple. Same thing with the other hand. And my fingertips got affected as well. So my number one reason for switching to a short scale bass was to decrease my reach. Now I came from the classical music world, so I was used to doing long, uh, long reaches. Uh, and in piano, I was trying to reach uh, ninths and sometimes tenths in the left hand. Uh, and the right hand. So reaching this way uh, became more and more uncomfortable for me to do and became painful to play. So I was left with the option of either stop playing or find a way around it uh, where possible. And that's where short scale basses came for me. So the number one reason for my switch is to decrease the reach. With the shorter nut to saddle length, uh, the spaces between the frets became smaller so not only do I not need to reach way out here for uh, the lower positions, uh, but if I wanted to hit a chord or uh, hit four frets uh, to a finger span, that distance became smaller. And uh, as a result of that, it became much more comfortable to play. Now, there are lots of other reasons I switched to short scales as well. Smaller instrument, less weight, better on your back. So that's a great reason. Um, it also changes the tone. By having a shorter uh, scale length, the bass tone carries a much more prominent fundamental with decreased harmonics and overtone content. So in a mix that might sound a little more focused, a little punchier, because you have less kind of sonic information uh, way out in the higher frequencies that might end up getting lost in the mix. Um, the other benefit that I also find playing short scales is the string tension becomes much looser. So in my plucking hand, I don't need to strike the string or pull on the string quite as hard uh, to get uh, a nice round bass tone. So putting the lower tension and the shorter reach together, shorter scale basses just become far easier for me to play. But today I'm gonna to demonstrate to you with my five string uh, 34 inch scale bass, how I've gone uh, and approached converting this into a short scale. So this is my Court A5 Custom Z-Bass. It is a uh, 34 inch scale five string bass. I currently have it tuned uh, standard, so with a low B string, uh, so B to G. Uh, measurements, you can find up there. So I used to practice a lot of Hainan style exercises on, on the piano and I adopted them for cello and also for uh, for a bass guitar. So here's this bass wide open, uh, passive through my Line 6 Podgo Galleon Kruger model into the computer. No EQ, no compression. Uh, here's a pretty typical Hainan exercise. Now this bass sounds great tuned standard uh, as a 34 inch scale, but as you can see, doing uh, you know four fret spans at the, in the lower first position uh, is physically taxing for me. 
So what I ended up doing was I tuned this a whole step down, making this a low A string. And then I would put a capo on the second fret. Now, having experimented doing this on several bases here uh, would be my suggestion for you if you wanted to uh, approach converting a 34 inch scale to, to a short scale. Because your second fret essentially will become your new nut, it might be useful depending on how your bass is already set up. So have a little more neck relief. So that way your second fret is a little higher. When you put the capo on, you still have enough string distance up here, uh, which would then effectively be on this bass, the 22nd fret there. So I'm gonna try, hopefully you can see that in the camera. I don't have my action crazy low on this bass, but it would be higher, slightly higher than what I would like if I were playing this as a standard 34 inch scale. Let's tune the bass down. And we're back. So now the bass is tuned an entire step, so a full tone down, making this a low A string. Now my capo of choice is uh, the page capo. Uh, I like it because it looks a little less obstructive and in the way. Uh, and I like that I can apply even tension across all five strings, uh, mimicking a nut. So let's put that on. So by putting a capo on the second fret, I have now turned a 34 inch scale bass into essentially a short scale 30 and a half inch scale uh, bass. You can see measurements up here. Now I'm not claiming to be the first one to have come up with this. Uh, in fact, uh, upright basses in the orchest orchestral world uh, sometimes have extended fret, uh, sorry, fingerboard uh, access to give you low D and low C. And those would have kind of uh, clamps that would come down and lock into place. Uh, similar idea also came from the old Cubickies from the 80s that had the, uh, the extra clamp that came down, uh, giving you two extra frets on a low E string, essentially giving you uh, a low D, but not in drop D because your finger fret positions would still be the same. So here we are. I'll play this, or play the same uh, Hainan B major scale on the shorter bass now. Even though I messed that up, this is way more comfortable to play. Uh, the fret reach uh, is just in a more comfortable position um, for me. So this is how I typically have this five string set up. I have it set up a whole tune, sorry, a whole tone uh, down, capo on the second fret, making it a 30.5 inch short scale five string tune with a low B. Now this approach is not for everyone. As I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, the tonality you get from a short scale bass is quite different from a regular scale bass. If you are looking for those very clear piano-like uh, bass tones with tons of harmonic content, short scale basses are not for you. I've had the chance to play several ding walls, uh, so a fan fret um, basses made in Canada, and they sounded 
amazing. I thought that low B was just like a piano. It, it's fantastic. And the instruments coming out of Sheldon Dingwall's shop in Saskatchewan are just pieces of art. They're fantastic. Uh, but I think the low B string is 37 uh, inches. So for me, they're not playable for me. Uh, but tone wise, you get that very clear piano like uh, very rich harmonic content uh, bass tone. So if that's what you're into, then get something like a Dingwall or play a standard uh, scale bass. I prefer kind of rounder, uh, punchier, more focused fundamental bass tone. So playing short scales was actually, uh, it got me a lot closer to the tone that I heard in, in my head. But more importantly, it decreased the fret distance for me, making my fretting uh, far easier and the lower string tension made plucking uh, far easier uh, in my right hand. So for me and how I play and trying to you know cope with the physical limitations that I have, going short scale was the way to go. Getting a five string short scale that doesn't have very narrow string spacing at the bridge, I found difficult. Uh, there are a few models out there. I know Atelier Z makes a uh, five string baby model, uh, but if I'm not mistaken, those are either 16 and a half or 17 millimeter string spacing at the bridge. Uh, and I found that a bit small uh, and my fingers sometimes would get stuck uh, in between the strings. Uh, I'm used to kind of 18, 18.5 uh, millimeter string spacing uh, these days. So uh, I found uh, the, the narrow string spacing just not to fit how I play. Uh, maybe if there's increasing, uh, you know, market demand for short scale five strings, maybe more manufacturers will start uh, making them. But I have never really gone into a guitar shop and uh, been able to try one out myself. So this was a, a solution that I came up with because it was a base that I already had. And none of the modifications here I made were, were invasive or reversible, uh, making this a short scale base. Uh, the other thing uh, I will add here is if you do end up putting a capo on the second fret uh, and converting this to, to a short scale base, uh, except for the first uh, few dots, your dot positions will no longer be in the right spot because you've, uh, you've moved the octave fret. So what I ended up doing on this base is because I didn't want to lose the existing dots is I just took a, I took a black Sharpie and here on the 14th fret here, I, I put two lines. So I know where the octave is. Uh, that's how I've cheated. You can put painter's tape or uh, mark it up. However, uh, you know, it's convenient for you. I just chose to put two lines with a black Sharpie. So I know, uh, where the octave is.